A very good day to everyone. I welcome you all to this webinar on Service Test Plus MSP 10.5 features. My name is Prem Maheshwaran. I am an ITSM evangelist in Manage Engine. Today in this webinar, we are going to discuss about four major features that we released in the version 10.5. Apart from the four major features, we also released a bunch of nifty features that are going to help you with your day-to-day -day service management. So let us not waste any more time and let's dive into the presentation, all right? So the first introduction is about GoToWebinar. So if you're new to GoToWebinar, please take a look at this slide. So in the GoToWebinar control panel, there is a section called questions through which you can ask your questions about the features and the discussion. If you'd like to initiate a chat, you can use the chat section and all the questions will be answered at the end of the webinar. So finally, we'll have some time to discuss your questions. We'll give answers to most of the questions. And also, we'll shoot an email with all the questions that are answered. All right, so let's take a look at the first feature that we're going to discuss today. It's called Business Dashboard. See, under the dashboard of Service Test Plus MSP, now we have introduced a new dashboard that talks about the business of how your MSP is performing for each and every account. So let me take you into the product and I'll show you the dashboard that we have created. All right, so this is version 10.5. Let me go to the dashboard section. So under the dashboard section, if you can see here, there are all the previous dashboards that are already available in the product. Along with it, we have now introduced business dashboard. So what does this dashboard show? It shows the revenue that you are generating for each and every account and all accounts put together. It shows the available technicians, the build time, how many assets that you're managing across accounts, what is the customer satisfaction percentage and your total turnaround. Now you can also filter it down for each and every account, right? So if you choose a specific account, it will show the revenue that you have generated for the account. You can go by this year, last year, a monthly revenue or a quarterly revenue filters. Likewise, the billing cycle that has been created for each and every account. What is the customer satisfaction for a particular year or a month, all right? And also you can see the top 10 technicians who have created or generated customer satisfaction. And also an important widget that we have added into this dashboard is billable versus non-billable hours that are logged against a specific account by all my technicians put together. So all the, the work log items that are marked as billable will be shown here as billable and non-billable tasks, work logs, will be shown here as non-billable. So that will give you an idea about how many non-billable uh, work orders are being created against a specific account, right? So in addition to this, this particular dashboard can be made available to any technician with a role. So let me go into the admin section to show the new role that we have created. So under MSP detail, roles. Now, if you take a look at here, you will find a new role called MSP dashboard that is not deletable. When you assign this dashboard role, MSP dashboard owner role to a technician, he can now view the uh, business dashboard functionality. All right, so if you wanna see how many technicians are assigned with this role, you can click on this user icon here and it'll show all the technicians who are being assigned with this particular role. So that is the first feature that we wanted to discuss. All right, so I believe this feature will give you more insights on how the business is performing on the whole. The second major feature that we want to talk about is timesheets, right? Now, technicians will be given the privilege to generate their own timesheets and send it for approval to account for all the work that they have done for a week uh, and they can pass it on to their reporting managers. To access timesheets, you need to go under the new timesheets tab that you'll find in 10.5. So under the timesheets tab, you'll find two views, timesheets that are pending for approval and my timesheets. So if you are given the privilege to approve timesheets, so once again, that is a role that has to be assigned to a technician. So any technician who has the privilege to approve timesheets will be shown all the available timesheets submitted by my technicians, by the technicians, all right? So once again, you need to go into the admin section, go to the roles, and here, when you go to create a new role, there is a new section added to enable a technician to approve timesheet and view timesheets. Once this privilege is given, any technician who has this role can approve timesheets submitted by other technicians. 
by default when a technician goes to submit his own timesheet he needs to go to the add my timesheet section click on new timesheet choose the period so let me go to the previous month so i'm going to create a timesheet for the week of 8th december and once i click on add if there are any work logs available a timesheet will get created let me give it a shot with another uh, week all right so there will be uh, once there are work logs added for a specific week then it will be created as a timesheet and it will be sent for approval let me quickly show you the one that i have already created it's for the week of 12th january 2020 so all these are the work logs that i have created during this week now I can create a new timesheet with these work logs and then send it for approval. Automatically, my reporting manager will get a notification. Once again, this notification rule is available under the notification rules section. So under the admin section, go to notification rules and there you'll have timesheets notification. You can enable or disable the notification as per your customization. So I can notify the approver when a timesheet is submitted and recalled. Once I do that, as soon as I submit a timesheet, a notification will be triggered to my manager. He can review this timesheet and then approve it. Once approved, it will be logged as a billable uh, you know, uh, entries that I have made. So that way, technicians can now account for all the work that they have done. The third feature that we want to talk about is request lifecycle. Now, Service Test Plus has become more dynamic with the movement of requests from one status to another status. Timesheets will allow you to create a workflow for your tickets. You can now choose the path through which a ticket has to be moved and completely resolved. All right, so let me explain you with a small example. So to find this feature, you need to go under the admin section, search for request lifecycle. All right, and here, I have created different life cycles for different types of issues. For example, if I want to process a laptop request, the flow is completely different. So I have created a separate flow request life cycle for laptop requests. Similarly, if an incident is reported regarding security, it has to be completely dealt in a different way. So I have created a different flow. Right? Let me quickly show you the laptop request flow first to give you an idea. Right? So, there are two important things that you have to understand with request life cycles. So, as soon as a request is submitted, it will be in open status, correct? So, now from open status, I can move this request to any status that I wish. But I want to guide my technicians to only move the request to specific statuses. I don't want my technicians to straight away move this request to on hold status and put it there forever. So I have created a logic here. So from open status, I allow only two types of movements. One, it can be canceled. If the requester wants to cancel this request, I can straight away cancel it. Or otherwise, I have to initiate approval so that I can get the approval of the requester's manager and I can further process the ticket, right? So I achieved it by creating a flow from the open status to the next possible status. Right. To do that, all I have to do is drag and drop and create a path. And if you observe in this path, there is another section which shows a transition. So these boxes, which are in bluish green colors, are called transitions. So the transition will define the actions uh, that has to be performed when a ticket is moved from one status to another. Right, so when I click on transition, it will show three events before the transition from open status to cancelled, during the transition, and after the transition. Right, so during these three events, we can trigger actions that can perform operations within an outside service desk plus. So there is an exhaustive uh, video available about how request lifecycle works and how it can be used in various sections. So let me also give you another example, right? So that I have created for a security incident. All right, so this particular workflow was created for a security incident. So if someone wants to report a security uh, issue that he has undergone, as soon as he goes to report the is issue, he has to mandatorily submit 
the personal data description that is under the threat and also the business data description. These are two additional fields that I have created to gather maximum inputs before I process the request. Likewise, once the request is in open state, I want to allow my technician to guide it in a guided path. For example, I don't want my technicians to move this request to on hold if it is reported by a VIP user. All right. So if uh, the user is a VIP user, probably your CEO or CTO. I don't want my technicians to move this request to on hold status. So I have created a logic here, a rule here, which says if VIP user is S, negate the operation, meaning you'll not be allowed to move the request to on hold status. So that is what request lifecycle will allow you to achieve. For all the other types of users, for all the rest of the users, you can move the request to on hold. But if it is a VIP user, you cannot. So even within the moment of statuses, you can set up rules and uh, you know, apply a criteria with which the status movement has to happen. So that is the third important feature that we wanted to discuss. And the fourth feature is an interesting and cool one. It's maps integration. Now Service Test Plus MSP will support integration with Zoho Maps and Google Maps. To find this integration, you need to go under the admin section and there is a Maps integration. Search for it and you'll have an option to enable or disable Maps. So I have enabled it. Now once I enable, you get two options. Integrate it with Zoho Maps, which is our offering, which is free to use. And also if you wish to you go with Google Maps, you can choose Google Maps and provide the API key and use your own subscription of Google Maps. Right? So for this demonstration, I'm going to go with Zoho Maps, save it. Once I save this configuration, uh, you will find the Maps tab here. And going to the Maps tab will show the map view of your operations. All the sites for which you are operating your MSP will be shown here in this map. All right. So whenever you go to define a site, you can also declare the coordinates uh, in which the site is operating. All right, let me quickly go into the sites section. Now here, when I want to create a new site, all right, so here I can choose the coordinates, the latitude and longitude, or I can even pick it from the map. So that way I can declare all the sites for which uh, my operations are happening. So there is one more advantage of making use of the maps. You can also view your technician's location. If your technician is using the mobile application for Service Test Plus MSP, he will now get the privilege to uh, publish his location and you can also view the location of your technician live. So there is going to be a new version of the Service Test Plus MSP mobile application which we are planning to release uh, shortly. Once the update is available, technicians can choose to publish their location and their location will be shown in the maps view. So that will be really helpful for field service management. If your technicians are on the move and if they have to be deployed to a specific client's location to fix issues, uh, it'll be really handy and it'll allow you to better manage the field services. So that is the fourth important integration that we want to uh, uh, talk about. So this will allow your administrators to view who is nearer to, uh, which technician is nearer to the client's location and automatically assign the ticket uh, to the technician. So apart from these four major features, we also have a bunch of nifty features uh, that we wanted to really talk about. The first feature is ability to move the tickets between accounts. So back then or uh, before 10.5, we did not have this option. If a ticket is logged wrongly against an account, uh, you may have to delete it or you may have to cancel it and then raise a new ticket against a proper account. You don't have to do it anymore. If a ticket is logged against a wrong account, you can still edit the ticket and move the request to a proper account. Let me quickly show you that. 
So say for example, this is a, a ticket that is logged against Acme Securities. Now I have to move it to a different uh, account altogether since it is a wrongly created ticket. All I have to do is go to the request details section under actions. Now you'll find the option change account. You can also do alt plus a. That is a shortcut using which you can do this action. Click on change account. Now in this view, I can choose the site comma account and move this ticket altogether to a new account. So when I do that, this request will be moved to the new account a section, new account uh, in a container, and also the user will be created as a requester there. The second feature is MSP requesters can now raise tickets through email for any account. If someone is declared as an MSP requester, for example, now you can allow your vendors to be logged as MSP requesters, right? So that way, your vendors who do not have, uh, you know, direct presence within your premises can still raise, uh, you know, tickets against multiple accounts, right? They might be providing services for multiple clients that are logged as accounts in your service desk as MSP. Now you can allow your vendors to raise tickets against multiple accounts, all right? So all you have to do is declare your vendor as a MSP requester. So under the MSP section, you have to log him as a requester. Once he is created as a requester there, he can choose the email address against which he wants to create, against the account to which he wants to create a request and shoot an email and that will be logged as a, a ticket under the specific account, right? So the third feature is point of contact. A user can be defined as a point of contact for a specific account. So under M account details, go to the requesters section. So under Acme Securities, if I want to make Rob as a point of contact, I can edit his account, go to his profile, scroll down. Now you'll find point of contact in addition to the already existing account manager privilege. Once I enable it, he'll automatically become the point of contact. And also he'll be an account manager, all right? So he'll be given the privilege to view work logs, problems, changes, assets, and reports. So point of contact will be the single person whom you can get in touch with, uh, you know, for any queries in that specific account. So he'll be the in charge of managing all the pending tickets. All right, the next feature is ability to filter unknown requesters request. If someone has logged a request into Service Desk Plus MSP and he's not registered against any account, now what you have to do with such request can be customized in the self-service portal settings. For which, let's go into the admin section, search for self-service portal settings. See, under the self-service portal settings, we have added this new rule. All right, to set the behavior of unknown users request. So whenever a request is logged by such a user, should it be approved, created as a new user and get added to the account? Should it be listed as an unapproved user? Or should it be approved user if email is sent via a proper account's email address? Right, so the behavior can be declared here. So if I say unapproved users, all such emails will end up in a separate view. So once I save this section, I can go back to my request list view. Under the filters, unapproved requests, unknown requests will be uh, given as an option and all tickets that are logged by unregistered users will be listed here. So you as a technician can pick and choose what should happen to such requests. It will not end up in your active request list view. Help desk config role for MSPs. So this has been a requirement for a very long time. So to give a technician the privilege to modify the configuration, but uh, you know, to a specific MSP. So go to the admin section under roles. You will now find <coughs> help desk config. So help desk config role will can be assigned to a technician, and that will give the technician the privilege to modify the configurations that is belonging to the MSP, uh, like the business rules, SLAs, and everything. So without giving him complete access to all the modules, only the help desk section 
will be given the admin, administrative privileges. Now the technicians can modify anything that is related to all the admin configuration related to this specific module. All right, he'll not have access to problems, he'll not have access to change related configuration, but only with help desk module, he'll have complete access to all the configurations. All right, and there are a couple of custom trigger enhancements that we have introduced with this new version. So go to the admin section and search for custom triggers. So here, if you're already an existing user who is using custom triggers effectively, you might know what you can achieve with it. So just like business rules, you can define a criterion and when the criterion is matched, now I can execute a script to perform operations within Service Test Plus or outside Service Test Plus. So now we have enhanced this functionality to also trigger email notifications. So we already have email notification rules, but in special situations, when a specific criteria is matched, for example, uh, if there is a high priority or a critical priority ticket logged against a specific account and you'd like to notify a set of people with an alert message, now that can be created as a trigger item and you can also customize the message that has to be triggered out. All right? So all such messages can be stored as templates here. You can use a template and also choose who has to be notified. So this section will allow you to trigger notifications to account managers, organizational roles that you have created, department in charges, etc. So you can pick and choose the variable. Accordingly, the notification will be triggered to the person who is assigned against this uh, organizational role. So this is the first enhancement that we have introduced with custom triggers. The next enhancement is webhook action. Webhook action will allow you to create new webhooks to perform operations with third-party applications. Say for example, Jira. If you'd like to log a bug against an issue in Jira, so an issue in Service Test Plus is identified as a bug with a product and you want to log this as a bug in Jira, all you have to do is write a new webhook, all right, add a description, and you have uh, the option to provide the URL to perform these four operations. You can do get, put, post, and delete. So in this case, I want to record a new bug. I can choose put, provide the URL, header and parameters, write the body, the structure through which the webhook has to be invoked, and then save it. Once I do that, whenever the criterion is matched, right? say for example, if I change the request type to bug, automatically this webhook will be called and the operation will be performed in Jira. Likewise, when I close the incident, if I want to get information from Jira and update it, here in the incident record, I can also perform the get operation. So webhooks will allow you to directly declare the hook that you want to invoke uh, directly in Service Test Plus without having to write a script, an independent script like VBR, uh, you know, uh, PowerShell. So instead of that, you can directly use the uh, API structure here and call webhooks with third-party applications. All right, and finally, the last feature is referring the account details. So we as technicians, when we are actively working on tickets, we don't love to go to the account section every now and then and refer the account details. So if you want to know what kind of subscription plan they are in, if you want to know who is in charge of the account, if you want to know who is the account manager on point of contact, we don't love to juggle between the tabs. So we understood that it's a pain point and we want to solve this problem and that is why we have given an option to view the account information directly from uh, the floating toolbar that is there in the uh, application. So wherever you are, whichever tab you are in, if you are working with a specific ticket and you want to quickly see uh, the account information, I can go and click on this new icon and that will show the account details, contract information uh, and all the necessary information that will be helpful for you to resolve the incident. And also any attachments that are made against the account that you would like to download and read will also be there. So we believe this feature will be helpful for technicians who are actively working on the tickets. Without any deviation, they can get maximum information uh, to work on the incident.
Thank you all for being a part of this discussion. If you have got any queries, also feel free to shoot an email to support at servicedeskplusmsp.com that you can find in this last slide. Thank you so much and have a good one. Cheers.